Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Video Game Takeout. Well, the Kirby review is taking longer than I expected, so I've decided to do another episode in the meantime. This time I'm going to take a look at one of the most unique games for the GBA. It's Super Monkey Ball Jr. I'm sure many of you have played Monkey Ball in some form on one of the many consoles that it's been released on, and you probably avoided the GBA version fearing the worst. I mean, the original game is nothing but 3D, and the GBA is notoriously bad at 3D. So it seems like a bad match. Well, usually you're right, but this time you're not. Not only is the game in 3D, but it also has no analog control, and it still manages to be fun. When I first heard the game was going to be on the GBA, I hoped that it was going to be an isometric game more like Marble Madness than Monkey Ball, but it's not. In fact, it's a very faithful port of the original game. Everything here is in full 3D, and honestly, I think it's the best looking 3D game I've seen on the GBA. It's fast, there's no pop-in, and the camera is always behind you so you never have to worry about it. The other big reservation that I had was that moving from the consoles to the GBA would mean losing the precise analog controls of the original. Well, I was half right on this one. The controls are not perfect, and it can be a bit harder at times to do some movements, but overall I think the controls are very solid and I almost never die because of them. The only real drawback is that in Monkey Ball you control the level, not the ball, and so it can be a little bit jumpy at times. The GBA version has all the modes from the GameCube game and has a total of 69 stages. The levels start off easy, but end with some that are brutally hard. The game also includes all the mini-games of the original, and they can be played with friends via the link cable. Also, golf and bowling can be played multiplayer on a single Game Boy by passing it around to each player. Most of the time, I don't talk about minigames, but these are a pretty substantial part of the game, and unfortunately, I didn't find them to be nearly as fun as the console versions, but they were okay, I guess. The sound in the game is also excellent, and even includes the voice clips from the console versions. The music sounds great, but there isn't much of it, so it gets a little old after a while. If there's one reservation I have about recommending this game, it's that the game is very difficult and can be frustrating. You need to be willing to try a stage over and over and over again until you get it right. I know some people really hate that type of gameplay, so consider this your warning. Combine that with having a limited number of lives and continues before you have to start the whole game over from the beginning, and it can be a really frustrating game. That being said, I definitely think that this game is worth checking out, and I think it's the kind of game that you'll dig back up in a few months and run through all over again. It has that perfect blend of easy to learn and tough to master that makes puzzle games so fun. It's easy to find for six or seven bucks, and at that price you really can't go wrong with this one. Well that's all for this episode. I know it took a while, but don't worry, the show should be back on track soon. Until then, be sure to check out RetroWareTV.com and browse all the great stuff that the guys are working on over there. Until then, this is Ben saying have a great week, and I'll see you next time on Video Game Takeout. Thank you.